Hello YouTube. Here's Ben with the 60 gallon cichlid tank. And today is a uh, water change day. But it's the uh, alternate week. Every week I do a uh, about a 50%. And uh, every other week I take all the decor out. So I can do some uh, deep vacuuming because I find that a lot of uh, a lot of waste gets in between these rocks and under these rocks and in places that uh, vacuuming around the rocks doesn't really help. A power head might help to uh, to get those items circulating and uh, that way sucked up by the filters. But I'm finding that when I move these rocks, I find a lot of waste. And uh, so every other week, I take everything out, and I re-rockscape. And uh, by mixing things up a bit, uh, I've heard that that can actually um, break up some of the territories that these fish can claim, and and by doing so, reduce some of the uh, some of the aggression. So um, now, why are cichlid keepers so obsessed with water changes? Well, because we overstock to um, to get the aggression sort of uh, spread out a bit. And because of that, we get uh, more waste. We also don't tend to use a lot of plants, live plants. These are artificial plants. We don't tend to use a lot of live plants, which can help with the cycle, the nitrate cycle, and uh, the ammonia cycle, and, you know, really consume some of the waste. But... Because of a lack of plants, because these fish do tend to dig up and destroy plants, and uh, because of the um, overstocking that cichlid keepers tend to do, we are uh, we tend to we tend to to do more water changes than most. Now these fish, this this tank, you would look at it if you just came in and looked at it, you'd say, well, that looks pretty clean, you know. But the uh, the sort of hidden killer in there is uh, a buildup buildup of um, nitrates that is a normal sort of a normal function of having animals producing uh, you know having fish producing waste and um, I have two two filters loaded up with uh, with very good um, beneficial bacteria and uh, they do a really good job but uh, you still you still need to do your water changes. It's like opening up a window in a room that's uh, that's been very sealed off and everybody's been there for quite some time. And uh, <clears throat> letting some fresh air some fresh air in for these guys. And imagine everybody's been using a little porta potty there in that same room and there's about uh, maybe a fifteen by fifteen room and there's about twenty of you in there. And uh, after a while, that room would get a little, uh, <laughs> a little uncomfortable. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and freshen up their room here by doing a water change. And the first thing I'll do is I'm going to pull all of the decor out and I'm going to put it into these five gallon buckets that I've laid out right in front of the aquarium. These buckets used to be a big part of my water change. In other words, I used to use them to cart water back and forth from the water source. I'd be making, you know, I would make maybe. Uh, a dozen trips taking water out and uh, putting water back in and uh, after a while my back started to uh, get a little sore so I picked up a, uh, a 50 foot Aquion um, siphon that um, I can uh, I can drop in the tank and I can use the other end to uh, water the plants outside while, while I'm taking water out and at the same time I can uh, attach it to the tap and treat the tank, match the temperature, and then uh, run the tap water directly into the tank. And that um, I, I treat for the entire, um, just to be safe, I treat for 60 gallons, even though I'm only replacing maybe maybe 25 or 30. And, um, and I have found that that works perfectly, and my back is feeling a lot better. So um, first step is uh, remove the decor. I take my time, I remove everything very slowly, 
and um, as I'm removing it, I'll note you'll notice that there's some little areas here that have been dug out. These are some claimed territories. They've been dug out all the way down to the grate that I have at the bottom of the aquarium. Little tip I picked up from Rob Oz. Uh, Rob Oz were over in uh, Canada. He's on YouTube, and uh, <clears throat> you can see that the uh, areas where there were a lot of rocks, where there was lava rock here, has a lot of. I don't know if you can you can see it floating around, but there's a a lot of that stuff there. See that? That's the stuff that uh, normal vacuuming is not going to get, but continues to contribute to the buildup of waste and nitrates. All the decor now has been put into the buckets. And uh, you can see I've stirred up quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of gunk. You can also see there's a three, there's one right there. Three areas that have been pretty dug out. These fish have been busy busy digging. There's a big one right there. That was probably the um, iceberg. He likes to make a big pit. You can see the build up on the sides there. So these territories are all going to get mixed up because I'm going to vacuum and spread the uh, substrate around and then I'm going to uh, reintroduce the uh, decor, the lava rock, in, in different positions so they're going to have to figure that out. Now that the uh, decor is out, the water level has dropped a little bit and I can stick an arm in there um, uh, you know my entire arm can go in the aquarium and I can scrape the glass and uh, and clean off the glass and get uh, get the walls of the aquarium nice and clean move the heater around a little bit just to get behind that and uh, just do a little bit of that work before I start uh, taking water out of the tank by the way, it's, Mar it's on March 15th, and March 15th was the last time I serviced the uh, Sun Sun canisters. And uh, this is May 21st, May 21st, 2016. You can see they're moving a lot of water. They're still working strong, still going strong. <clears throat> I have the... Um, the outputs here in the middle pointed slightly outward, hopefully trying to create a flow to get the uh, things over into the intakes, which are on the sides. I position the intakes on the sides. Not sure if that's the best positioning. I think some some power heads are going to help, but for right now, I've put the outputs. Both of them are located at the top center of the tank, and. Uh, But these sun suns are uh, extremely quiet. You don't really hear anything, do you? So they're just very, very quiet. Just get the job done. Loaded up with a lot of good media. Got some lights up here. Certainly recommend you get some of these lights. Here's the other filter. And... Um, if you look back there, there's a little timer on the bottom there. I have my lights on a timer. I never touch my lights. They're just on a timer. And uh, it's a very quiet timer I was able to buy. It doesn't tick, doesn't make any noise. I used to sometimes fall asleep. Uh, maybe you fall asleep reading a book or watching TV and you wake up at uh, 3 in the morning and realize that your, uh, your fish have had a real long day with the lights on. So um, by putting a timer on there, that got rid of that problem. Certainly recommend that. This is a, an API plastic coated 300 watt heater back there. And what I like about it is that when it's working, when it's working the heat, it has a red light that goes on. And when it's hit perfect temperature, it goes green. So it's, um, I really like it. The plastic coating is on there because some of these fish will get pretty big. And even at this size, they dart around and they can, uh, they can bang into a heater, and I think maybe a glass heater could actually maybe be damaged with some of the force that these uh, cichlids can generate. 
Now I'm just going to use my uh, little, little sponge here and just polish the inside of the glass. I do it usually once in the middle of the week, so it's never really too bad. But um, I do have some windows around the aquarium, so I do get a buildup of brown algae. I'm not sure if a uh, pleco would help with brown algae. I've heard they don't eat brown algae. I heard they only eat green algae. But uh, at any rate, so I'll just polish the inside of the tank and then start my vacuuming. All right, I finished uh, polishing the inside of the glass with the uh, with the brittle sponge that I was using, and um, I'm ready for vacuuming now. Uh, when you do that, uh, when you scrape for algae, for me anyway, I have to get below the uh, below the line of the substrate. This is a crushed shell substrate, and I can get a lot of buildup just below the uh, substrate line. And also, of course, the corners can get kind of built up, and in some of the areas like behind the intake tubes, behind the heater. Places like that, I find there can be a little bit of a buildup, but um, I, I use this thing here sometimes to scrape. This thing here hanging on the side, this little magnetic scraper, but it, it tends to be a little bit useless. Uh, I found this doesn't really do as good a job as getting your hand in there. All right, so let's go ahead and vacuum. So here's the uh, Aquion 50 footer. It's been able to save my back and take me off of the uh, bucket brigade. And um, I'll show you how I use it. Each end has valves, these little valves that go on or off. I don't know if you can see them with this lighting. Uh, it's a blue valve there. Just make sure that your valve is pointed the right way or else it's not going to work. So we drop this end in. And I just secure it by dropping the glass lid on top of it. I've never had it pop out ever. You can attach this end to a faucet to get it going uh, for the siphoning. I don't do that. I just suck on the end and uh, get it going just like a regular siphon. And then I use it uh, to water these plants out here, out here in the patio. All right, I got it going. Give these guys a little aquarium water. We're still kind of in a drought out here in California, so um, we don't like to waste water. It's going to be some waste, of course. I mean, can't help it. I think this water is pretty nutritious for these fish. I mean, for these uh, plants. It's pretty good, clean, filtered water. So, um, I'll water these plants a bit, then I'll just drop it on the grass, drop the hose on the grass, then go inside and do the, uh, the deep gravel cleaning. I've found for a variety of reasons, probably having to do with fluid mechanics, these, uh, these types of uh, long hose siphons don't have the suction power of uh, just the usual short siphons, but they still work. They still will dig, will dig some of the waste out. You can see it coming up doesn't come up with as much force. I mean, when I was using the short siphon and, and the buckets, uh, the gravel would get sucked. I mean, the uh, substrate would get sucked up into the uh, up into the siphon. But it still works. It just takes maybe a little bit longer. But that's okay, because I need to reduce the water level to, uh, to about 50%. So I've got a little ways to go here. So now I'll do a little bit of deep gravel cleaning, and I'll also level out the gravel, getting rid of some of these territories, and then re-rockscaping. So I'll finish that job, and uh, not something you need to, to watch me do entirely. So just realize that I'm doing this throughout the entire tank, and then I'll level out the uh, substrate, and then return the, uh, then re-rockscape. Wherever there were rock formations, uh, wherever I had rocks or lava rock built up, you'll notice there's a lot of a lot of junk that comes up. That's the kind of stuff that settles between the rocks, which is why I think it's important to um, take everything out. In my case, every other week, you know, whatever works for you. If what you're doing is giving you good test results, then you know, keep doing it. But for me, every other week, I take everything out. 
Okay, I've completed my vacuuming and I've uh, dropped the water level to about 50%. I've mentioned in other videos how important it is to keep your, your heater down here, submersible down low. You notice I don't have to mess with it while I'm vacuuming. I've given that tip before in other videos. And um, <clears throat> I've done a pretty good thorough vacuuming. And uh, are you going to get every little micro piece of poop? No, you're not. It's uh, If that's what you're shooting for, you're going to drive yourself crazy. Uh, these fish are always dropping waste. Uh, there's always going to be a little bit in there. It's a work in progress, always. It's a living environment. So get it as clean as you can. This kind of substrate, this crushed cell, crushed shell is very forgiving. It's like the kind of carpet you put into a kid's playroom where uh, it can be a little dirty and doesn't really show it. And uh, it works out well. Fish like it, they move it around a lot. And uh, it's kind of funny watching them carry the big pieces of shell. Using the same little sponge I used to scrape the algae off the tank, I go ahead and, and clean my plants. Try and get as much algae off of them as I can. Again, if you're going for absolute perfection, you need to go out and buy another plant. It's not going to be exactly perfect, but that's okay. It's not perfect in nature either, right? So both of these get a little bit of a scrape so they get some of their color back, and then I put them back into the tank. I tend to build uh, the rockscape kind of around the plants since they're sort of like a color complement, but um, <clears throat> I keep it real quick and simple on this step. Okay, the plant, the plants are back in now. Now I get to do the um, the rockscaping, and this is where you get to be a little creative and figure out the look that you want to have and uh, making sure to create a lot of caves and nooks and crannies for the fish to uh, to hang out in, okay? So this is where you get to be a little bit of an artist. And voila, my masterpiece. Already they're claiming their territories. That yellow lab there is pretty much the tank boss. He'll, uh, he'll get first pick of where he wants then everyone else will fit in. Let's go ahead and fill the tank up. Be sure to um, be sure to put the hose so it's just out of the water level, just above the water level. You'll uh, you'll see why that is in a minute. Otherwise, when you're trying to, um, if it's below the water level, and you've connected the hose uh, to the faucet, and you're trying to match temperatures by running water, you'll start a siphon going from your tank. To the sink. So um, I leave the, uh, the siphon part of the hose here that will that was the siphon is now the return. I leave that above the water level so that it doesn't start a siphon when I'm trying to temperature match the water before I start filling up the tank. I'll treat the full uh, the full 60 gallons. I'll treat for 60 gallons. Uh, so I'll put enough in there that could treat 60 gallons of water of this API tap water conditioner. This has worked really well for me. I haven't had any problems with my fish. Very concentrated. This one bottle can last you a very long time. Uh, I'm down to the very end of it though, and um, and I have some purigen, purigen um, in my uh, canisters, and I've heard that, that this might work a little bit better with purigen since it's a sea chem product. So I, as soon as this run as soon as this runs out, the API, I'm gonna start using this powdered form of safe, and that'll be how I'll treat my water in the future. I've heard great things about SAFE. You'll need a little adapter. An adapter, you'll remove the, uh, you'll remove this and put the adapter on so you can connect your Aquion or your Python or whatever it is that you're using. These washers have a tendency to fall out. So be sure that your washer is in place or else the water is going to splash or shoot out. So. Uh, be very sure that you're that this guy is in place in your siphon. Okay, it goes right right in there in your connector. They tend to fall out pretty easily. I find them on the floor all the time. I already have my adapter in, and uh, I have a bottom metal adapter. Put it on there, and then this thing. These guys are tightened pretty firm. You know, I I hand tighten them, and then I came a little extra maybe a, a quarter inch with a, with a wrench. And <clears throat> make sure your valve on the side is straight so water flows out this way. Uh, the reason, um, if I start the water flow now, 
and the uh, siphon was inside the tank below the water level, it would start to siphon water from the tank, and I don't want to do that. So, <clears throat> at any rate, uh, what I'll do now is I'll is I'll match using the thermometer from the tank. I'll match this water, this water temperature, so it's perfect. And then after having matched it, and it's perfect, I then just simply switch this valve over and the water starts filling up the tank and um, and I sit back and watch it happen instead of moving buckets back and forth over and over again and uh, then I do a wipe down and uh, and the water change process is, is over so <clears throat> it's pretty easy the uh, long hose um, of the python or the aquion in this case stays clean because I'm running tap water to the to the treated tank and that tap water of course has uh, a little bit of chlorine in it and uh, chloramines and things so that uh, kills the algae in the tubing otherwise you'd have a pretty black tube after a while so that completes the water change and as you can see it's looking pretty good. The sun sun's cleaning it up very, very quickly. And um, we have the old uh, floating in the air kind of a situation going on here. And uh, <clears throat> and so like I said earlier, it's like uh, opening a window in a stuffy room and letting a lot of fresh air in for these fish. And uh, really is your best safeguard against disease and uh, just the best thing you can do for your fish really keep that water quality pristine all right so I hope this helps and uh, let these fish show off a little bit for you here That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all you guys and gals. And uh, also I appreciate the support you've given my channel. I think I just posted a, a thank you for 500 subs and now I'm over 600. So uh, I really appreciate you guys a lot and uh, all the kind comments. And uh, and as you know, I, um, I read your comments, I respond to them. I'll provide help when I can. And I'll tell you when I don't know and uh, or maybe direct you to some place where you can get your answers okay so thank you so much